What is up, boys and girls? Aoki here, and the two versus two versus two versus two game mode arena is finally here. It is one of the most exciting updates to League of Legends, possibly of all time. I love the game mode, and I've got about 100 plus hours in the game mode so far, so I tend to think that I have a pretty good grasp on it, but I know a lot of people are going to be playing it today and tomorrow for the very first time, so I thought I would put together this video to let you guys know what the good champions are, what the bad champions are, um, but I want to preface this video by saying this is a for fun game mode, right? It's it's full of wacky outplays and, and, you know, ridiculously broken stuff. And that's on purpose, right? This is not supposed to be like a competitively viable esport or anything. So don't take this esport, you know, don't take this video as like gospel and think, oh, you know, my favorite champion wasn't on Aoki's tier list and S tier. That means I can't play it. No, go forth, play with your friends, you know, create the most broken crazy wacky combos and then let me know what you guys are having success uh playing but you know this this video is for people who want to get a little bit of a leg up and want to be able to you know know what is good to lock in if it's their first time playing um like i said i do have a lot of experience in this game mode so i i i know what's strong i've, I've been playing quite a lot of it i know what to abuse so i just wanted to say though if you go forth and have fun with your with your favorite champions with your friends all right uh that being said let's get into the tier list tier list now, typically, I start at the bottom of the tier list at the with the absolute worst champs, but this is a brand new game mode. You guys want to know what's strong. You guys want to know right off the bat what is strong. So I put together a little bit of a list of things that are very, very good in 2 versus 2, just conceptually. So what's good in 2 versus 2? Scaling champions, and this is because the round system essentially gives you a free guaranteed late game. So, you know, if you lock in Kaelin Summoner's Rift, it's not even a guarantee that you're going to hit level 16. Well, guess what? It is here. So same with like champions like Syndra, you get your passive scaled up first. There's also, uh, you basically are given free scaling every single round and it's accelerated. So for Senna, you get a set number of souls every single match. Uh, for Syndra, you get, you know, a set number of splinters or passive, Kale, et cetera, et cetera. So scaling champions, you basically get a guaranteed late game. So scaling champions are very strong. Enchanters alone are pretty decent. They have good sustain if you go like Moonstone Redemption. But if you pair enchanters with marksman as a two combo, two two champ combo, basically unplayable for the enemy team. It it is so insanely broken, and that's actually what I'm going to be using to climb uh, with my duo blonde. And I'm going to be doing all that uh, climb on stream. We're going to be going for rank one and two uh, on stream at Twitch.tv/ioki. So if you want to see some tryhard sweating in two v two, check out the stream. Um, another thing that's strong in this game mode is zone control champions. Things like Heimerdinger and Zyra and Teemo and Shaco, champions that like set down plants or traps that people have to walk into. Um, because these champions are basically balanced by the fact that, you know, in Summoner's Rift, you can just choose to not go into that area. Well, in two versus two, the map shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until, yeah, you basically have to step through like 18 Teemo shrooms or get hit by a bunch of, you know, Heim Heimerdinger turrets. There's no real way to outplay it. Uh, sustain is also very, very good. So champions that have sustain, like uh, enchanters that I've mentioned, but also even bruisers with like built-in life life steal sustain, champions that just outlast each other because essentially the map is going to shrink and shrink, and then once the ring is gone, champions that have life steal or some other way of shielding and healing themselves in addition to hitting the plants, those champs are really really good. Um, displacement CC for uh, the same reason I mentioned, the ring shrinks. So if you have someone like Alistar or Poppy who can just knock them out of the ring and then, you know, you can't get back in before the ring burns you, really, really broken. CC in general is good, but especially displacement CC, so knockbacks especially. Um, and then Wombo Combo One-Shot Champions, you're going to be seeing a million different montages of like full AP Malphite one-shotting people and stuff. It's super, super fun. Uh, but yeah, just one-shotting them before they can, you know, out-sustain out or outlast you is really, really strong. Um, as a rule of thumb, things that are bad in 2 versus 2 versus 2 versus 2. I'm just going to call it arena mode from now on, by the way. Uh, roaming champions. Champions that get a lot of value by roaming and, like, finding flank angles and stuff like that. That that includes champions like Pike and Bard and, you know, Katarina. You can't roam in this game mode. There are no lanes. There is no roaming. The, the enemy can essentially see you at all times, so you don't really have that, like, element of surprise. So roaming's pretty bad. Reset champions, you don't get a lot of value because there's not five champions. Katarina can't jump in, get one kill, which enables her to get a pentakill because there's only two of you. So if your champion gets most of its value from like getting a reset, you can't really do that here. Uh, duelist champions, again, it's not a one versus one. So champions like Fiora, kind of, uh, you know, champions that basically want to 
pull one specific opponent away from the rest of their team as like like a split pusher or something like Trindamir. Uh, can't really do that here. Assassins, once again, I've kind of already covered it. You can't roam, you can't flank, you can't take people by surprise. Can't really assassinate people in this game mode. And then global alts have very, very little value. So things like Twisted Fate alt and Nocturne alt and, uh, you know, the other globals, they're just really not that strong here. So that being said, let's get into specifics, guys. This is the S tier, absolutely broken. This is purely if you only want to win in this for fun game mode. If you want to climb all the way to rank one, these are the champions you should be playing. Any absolutely broken, insanely overtuned. You've got access to free, unmissable, undodgeable CC. Uh, Tibbers is an absolute menace in this game mode. Uh, Annie, Annie and Ivern is going to be an extremely, extremely broken combo. Um, you're going to see that one a lot as you get into higher elo. Uh, yeah, Annie. Annie Ivern, very broken. Karma, I've already talked a little bit about like how Sustain um, and Moonstone and Redemption are completely overtuned. Karma can not only empower her marksman, marksman teammate to 1v9, she can also... I've been in rounds where I play, I'm playing Karma and the ring is shrinking. I RW someone and they just literally can't kill me through the healing. Uh, healing in this game is completely, completely bonkers overtuned. So, yeah, for that reason, Karma and also Soraka, very, very strong. Syndra is a little bit of a dark horse. I don't think when the game mode came out, people realized just how broken Syndra was. But um, as I mentioned, scaling champions are very good. And she gets access to, like, her entire passive, like the splinter overhaul thing with her passive, where she basically gets built an Elder Dragon at, like, level 8 or something. It's really, really wacky. So much CC, so much one-shot potential. And then, of course, she has that displacement so she can knock people out of the ring. And then, speaking of people getting knocked out of the ring, this combo right here is one of the cheesiest, most broken things in the game. Alistar Poppy, you know what these guys are trying to do. They're going to run around the map, not fight you until the ring shrinks, and then Alistar is going to press W. You're going to try to get back into the ring, and he's going to Q you right on the limit of it. You're going to be CC. He's not, he's, he's not going to kill you. The map being on fire is going to kill you. Um, and the same thing with Poppy. She's got a little bit more um, duelist potential. Like, if, if Alistar gets, you know, griefs or something and dies early, Poppy can usually 1v2 just by, like, waiting until the ring is small and then getting, like, a two-man fully charged ultimate. It's pretty broken. Pretty broken. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about 1v9 hyper carries because this is the absolute top of the meta. Kog'Maw, Vayne, Lucian... Kaisa and to a lesser extent Twitch, these champions are reliant on having like an enchanter support to uh, you know support them. But uh, yeah, there's not much more one v nine than Kogmal running at you with like scoped weapons and like nine thousand HP shielding from Janna and stuff like that. These champions are just crazy. I will say, um, as a side note, Lucian is a little augment dependent, which is going to be RNG. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not always going to get like the best augments. You're not always going to get you know, the prismatics that you need. Lucian, I would say, in order for him to stay in this S plus tier, needs the augment called, um, was a Jeweled Gauntlet, which essentially lets all of his abilities crit. So when he's alting you, and there, you know, he's shooting like 25 lasers at you, every single one of those can crit. It one-shots pretty much everything in the game. Outside of Lucian having Jeweled Gauntlet, he's still pretty good, but he's not going to be on the same level as like Vayne, Kog'Maw, Kai'Sa, and um, Twitch in terms of they can carry the game. And then moving on to a couple more enchanters. These guys are pretty straightforward by the way they would be broken. We've already talked about how broken the uh, the 1v9 marksmen are. Milio empowers them. Tark makes them literally invincible. Tark also pairs really, really well with hyper carries that aren't marksmen. So the classic boosting strategy of Tark Yi is still very prevalent here. Uh, Janna, once again, a, a part of the reason why enchanters are so strong, by the way, is that there's a ton of low level common augments that just give you like. For instance, plus 20% healing and shielding. You don't even need access to the prismatics that a lot of other classes need to be broken. Enchanters have a lot of like bronze, silver, gold prismatics that just completely crack them open and make them super broken. But if you do get a prismatic, you're going to be wanting to re-roll until you get something called Spirit Link, which trades a portion of your HP for your carries. And yeah, that on top of all the shields from Moonstone and Redemption and the plants and your shields and your heals, your marksman's never going to die if you're playing correctly. Uh, and here's a little bit of a dark horse when it comes to supports that are strong that aren't an enchanter, Leona. Now, I've seen a lot of people say that Leona is terrible in this game mode. She is slightly augment dependent, which again, you're not always going to get the augments that you need. But if you can find Courage of the Colossus on Leona or Mystic Punches, which allows your auto attacks to reduce your basic cooldowns, 
So you auto Q auto, and not only do the two autos in that combo reduce your Q cooldown, the Q itself is going to reduce the its own Q cooldown. It's really crazy. You can auto Q auto Q auto Q auto Q basically, and then if you have Courage of the Colossus on top of that, you're going to be getting shields for every single time you CC them. If you haven't played this game mode, a lot of these terms that I'm saying probably don't make sense to you. Like, what is Jeweled Gauntlet? What is Courage of the Colossus? You're going to want to play the game mode and then come back to this tier list because there's a lot of augments which are basically like superpowers that you, you know, randomly generated. It's a whole thing, but come back to this tier list once you know what I'm talking about. Uh, on to the next one, Kaisa. Once again, just a 1v9 marksman, pair of Super Wealth Enchanter. Mordekaiser, this is going to be the ultimate noob stomper in 2v2. Uh, and hear me out, I'm about to say something crazy. You go Moonstone Redemption on Mordekaiser. And again, healing is just completely overtuned. So the innate healing and shielding that he has on, on his W is not only going to proc Moonstone for himself, it's going to proc it for his ally. You press W, Moonstone procs, you heal your entire health bar. It is one of the craziest things in the world. So don't build Mordekaiser like you do in Summoner's Rift. Build him as a healer shielder. You, you're going you're, you're gonna to thank yourself. Uh, Iron once again pairs super well with Annie. You basically turn a 2v2 into a 4v2 by summoning Tibbers and uh, Daisy. Yeah, and we've already talked about Lucian. So these are the absolute most broken champions. If, you, if your sole intent in this game mode is to climb and to win, play these champions right here. Uh, that being said, the next tier is these champions are very good. If you play these champions, well, you can win. Some of them are augment dependent. Some of them are map dependent because that's another thing about this game mode is there's going to be four different maps and some champions are better on some maps than others. For instance, if you have point and click CC, you're going to be really good on the Samira map because she combos off of CC. Um, if you have, you know, if you're a little bit outclassed by the enemy opponent, and but you have range gap on them, you can always just play for the set and then he will punch towards your enemies. Like there, there's a lot of really cool, like map dependent matchups. Um, but these champions are either match map and matchup dependent or augment dependent. But in general, these champions are pretty good. I've already talked about why Heimerdinger and Zyra are very good. Zone control is OP. Uh, Red Kane going in Assassin build seems like almost bugged with how much damage that it does. Uh, Teemo and Shaco, once again, just the absolute gods of zone control. Now, I will say they nerfed these champions specifically, so they are slightly weaker than they were on release. So if you look up videos of like, oh my god, you Teemo Shaco is so OP, they're not going to be quite that OP anymore. They did nerf their traps, they did nerf the, uh, the Shaco boxes, but still very, very good. Plus, Teemo's blind keeps people from hitting the plants. And trust me, plants, you're going to see when you play this game mode, plants are like life. People, like it is, the plants heal you and reduce all your cooldowns, including your ultimate. Uh, so it is literally, and, and it's such an, an insane amount of like healing and sustain that like you should be hitting the plant over hitting someone else. Even if you're getting targeted, you should be hitting the plant over fighting back. It's that broken. Now onto Riven, this champion is a little augment dependent. I've seen her do super, super well with like really heavy bruiser uh, sustain builds. And then also she needs the augment called Earthquake, which essentially creates like a fire pit. It's like a little fire earthquake every time that you dash. So Riven has 18,000 dashes up every second. So she's just constantly dashing on you and that earthquake's going off, does a million damage, pretty broken. Neela, uh, once again, very dependent on having an enchanter, but I've seen lots and lots of Neelas just go in, ult, and one-shot. Udir has that sustain going for him. Um, he doesn't really have the advantage of being able to go in, do a bunch of damage, and then kite out like he can in Summoner's Rift, because once again, the map shrinks. Twitch, we've already talked about. Ash is on here twice for some reason. Uh, and then again, there might be some champions on this tier list that I that are just completely missing. This tier list has been based entirely off of my own experiences and reading a couple of other tier lists. Um, there are some champions that people just aren't playing. So if I haven't seen a champion in a single game, I'm not going to put them on the tier list. Uh, Ash, once again, 1v9 Marksman, guys. Marksman plus Enchanter, super broken. Lethality Yorick is very broken. Samira, I thought, was the best champion in the game when she first came out because she pairs super well with, like, Alistar and Leona and not gonna lie, I feel like Riot gave her some champion-specific buffs just so they can sell that skin that looks really cool. Um, but I've I've since relocated her to the very good tier. Still very strong, but not quite as 1v9 as the other marksmen. Uh, Aphelios, once again, just a 1v9 marksman. Victor gets free scaling. Cassie gets free scaling. Kale is the scaling champion and gets free scaling. Swain has that 1v9 mentality where he can just sustain. He presses R and it's actually just infinite because the map is too, you know, too small to be able to disengage and kite out of it. So 
as the ring is shrinking, he's just gaining like 500 HP per, per second and you just lose. Uh, also, Zonius is very, very strong on this game mode for that exact reason. The ring is going to shrink, everyone's going to start dying, and you can buy 2.5 seconds of free life just by pressing Zonius. Um, Jax got that bruiser element for him. It, Malphite is very, very cheese dependent. If they flash, your entire plan is ruined. But I've seen several full AP Malphites just win the round in 0.5 seconds by ulting the second the round starts. And then you pair that up with a Misfortune who's going like Collector. She ults on top of his ult. It's really fun. We did a video on it. Um... I don't think this is going to be like top tier by any means, but it's a very viable cheese strat. And as you know, 99% of the players in these next couple of days are going to be completely new to the game mode. They're not going to see it coming. You know what I mean? Uh, Aatrox is pretty strong for the same reason that Riven is. Corky is a low key sleeper OP champion. I have not seen anyone talk about how broken Corky is, but yeah, his package is absolutely devastating. Um, Mundo is strong for the same reasons that Swain is. He can just out sustain. Ezreal wouldn't put him on the same list as like these marksmen up here, but he's got a little bit more um, self, uh, what's it called, agency because he can, you know, he can dash out and there's a lot of augments that like reduce his cooldown so he can zip in, zip out, zip in, zip out. It's pretty crazy. Gragas has some pretty good sustain and he's got displacement CC with his ultimate to knock people out of the ring. Jinx, I'm really surprised she just is very, she, she's still very good, but like she's a little underwhelming compared to like, Kaisa and Vayne and some of these other marksmen. Lilia is very good at the beginning of the round, and there's a lot of augments that let her just like infinitely get faster and faster, and it's super fun. But once the ring shrinks, you don't have anywhere to kite out. You can't, you know, space people with your WQ or anything. You kind of just, you either stat check them, you win or you don't. Um, Lissandra basically has a built in Zonia's. So I've seen a lot of Lissandra's playing like a stall comp where they just wait until the ring shrinks, they ult themselves. The Zonias and they last, you know, they have six seconds in the ring when it's completely fire. Uh, de moving on to the decent tier, these champions can win sometimes under the right circumstances, even more so than this tier. These champions are dependent on either what their partner is locking in, or the map that they're playing against, or how closely to the top tier meta the enemies are playing, or augments. There's a lot of different factors that go into whether these champions are good or not. Um, and this is going to be the vast majority of champions. Senna. Same thing in Summoner's Rift. If you have a tank to sit in front of you and you're playing Starving Senna, she's pretty good. If you get scoped weapons, she's pretty good. If you get a couple of other good, you know, augments, she can be decent. But there's a lot of champions that just jump on her, and if your flash is down for the round, you just kind of die. Lulu, surprisingly, is just not as good as the other enchanters. This is, like, the first time that, like, in the history of League of Legends that I feel like Lulu really gets the short end of the stick. She's just... She just doesn't have the shielding. She doesn't have any healing in her kit. So it's like, you know, the, the, the Moonstone activation is just a little not, not as good as like Soraka and Karma. Pretty surprised though. Uh, Pike was terrible on day one. They gave him some champion specific buffs. He actually does damage now. It feels really good to play Pike at, when he's like an actual champion in this game mode. But you don't really get the value of roaming. You can't really assassinate people, so there's going to be a lot of matchups where you just get stat checked. If they play, if they lock in Darius and Udir, you're not going to be able to trade blow for blow for them. Like, no matter how well you CC chain them, no matter how well you time your ultimate. Um, and that's another thing, is he's very dependent on, like, tracking people's flashes to land his ultimate in Summoner's Rift. People pretty much have flash every round in this game. So, uh, Rakan, very, very underwhelming in my opinion. Even though he does have those enchanter properties, even though he can combo, you know, 100 to 0 with the CC, just pretty underwhelming. Singed is super fun, but overall decent. Sivir just doesn't have the, the the carry power of the other the good marksmen. Um, a lot of these champions, I'm not going to go over all these champions individually, actually, just because, like, there's some good things about them. Yes, you can lock all these champions in and win pretty reliably, but again, it's, it's just matchup and augment dependent. Like... Uh, let me know if you guys have any champion specific questions about anything in this tier, but we're going to be moving on to the champions that really drew the short stick for this game mode. These champions are just straight up bad. Um, Yasuo can't dash through minions and stack up his Q. Yone can't really, you know, do what he wants to do. Rel, having CC is good, but having only CC in this game is quite bad. Uh, Blitzcrank, I think I also put him in decent, so we're going to remove him from here. Quinn. Being, you know, being able to roam is, is worthless in this game mode. Azir doesn't quite have the room that he needs to be able to maneuver, and, like, he can't Serima shuffle people into turrets or anything, because there's no turrets. Uh, Hecarim, 
just doesn't have the oof that he does in this game mode. Karthus, his ult is completely worthless, and Kled, outside of like ulting at the very beginning of rounds, his ult is pretty worthless. And then these champions, guys, okay, there's bad, and then there is literally only lock these champions in if they are your absolute favorite champion in the entire game. Yumi, worthless. Bard, worthless, but kind of fun because the chimes spawn like 10 times more often than they're supposed to. Um, ba Braum, don't even want to talk about him. Just, I mean, th these champions, like, seriously, I have tried to make them work. Well, I've tried to make two of them work, and th they just aren't meant for this game mode, unfortunately. So, hopefully Riot will hook them up with some buffs, and we can get some, like, fun bard videos in this game mode. But, yeah, I wanted to give you guys an overall, you know, top-down view of what I believe to be as good um, and what I believe to be as bad. And, again, I prefaced this at the beginning, but I'm going to say it again. This is a four-fun game mode. Go have fun with your buddies Go invent the craziest, wackiest build. You know, if you want to play Singed and Zillion and, and just see how fast you can make Singed go, do it, all right? This is not, you know, the World Cup, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, go go out and have fun with this four fun game mode. Huge shout out to Riot for making such a fun game mode. I honestly thought I was going to get burned out on it after like 10 games, and I am not at all. I am so excited. I'm sitting here waiting, counting down the hours for this game mode to go live. Uh, I'm almost going through withdrawals, but let me know what you guys think about this tier list down in the comments. I cannot wait to hear what you guys come up with. And uh, yeah, the meta is also going to be evolving because there's going to be new augments and even new maps that come out, I've heard. So, you know, maybe we'll revisit this tier list in a week or two, but this is a good day one tier list for you guys to know what is good and what is absolute dog doo-doo. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the, the video in the comments. Take it easy, boys. Peace. Uh.